can oh, see yeah, everybody. I can see you all. <laughs> <laughs> what a good looking bunch. Yeah. Awesome. I think we might kick off if that's all good. <coughs> all right. Great. Awesome. My name is Oliver Maroud. I'm one of the founders of The Whiskey List. So uh, thank you so much, everyone joining us tonight for this very uh, intimate uh, virtual tasting with some uh, current whiskey releases, some special releases, and some uh, a, a preview of what's to come for early next year, hopefully. So uh, I'll hand over shortly to our distillers, just some very quick housekeeping. Uh, this is a whiskey event, so please don't drink and drive if you need to from the living room to the house. Uh, you know, a bit of water. Uh, we are drinking some higher ABV whiskies as well. I think there's one at 62% as well. So if you need to, you know, add a few drops of water to your whiskey to make it a little bit more palatable, it's up to you. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way to drink whiskey. Um, any questions, uh, just to keep the background noise down, I've muted everyone. So if there's any questions, just put it into the live chat below and in between the, the conversations, we can jump in and answer your questions. Otherwise we can uh, get to it at the end. Um, we'll start off with the two core range whiskies. Then there's a very quick, uh, fun uh, questionnaire game show for the Overeem family feud, we're calling it. Uh, we'll, we'll jump in in the middle there and then we'll finish off on the final three samples. So, um, and I am recording this session. So if you do drop out for whatever reason or you wanna watch it later, we'll upload it to the Whiskey List YouTube uh, to watch it again later on. So yeah, if that's all good, I would like to Welcome our three esteemed guests, uh, Jane Overeem, Mark Salford, husband and wife team, and then Casey Overeem, the man who started it all. So good evening from uh, sunny Tasmania. Mm. Thanks guys, thanks, thanks so much for having us. Um, yeah, we're super excited to be uh, tasting these special whiskies with you tonight. Um, probably a year ago, we never thought we'd be doing this with Overeem again, but here we are. So we thought we'd make it extra special. Um, for those who don't know, uh, we did take the brand back, um, take our family business back um, in July. So we've only been back at the helm for about five months now. Um, yeah, so it's pretty special to be sitting here in the living room with with Casey, the founder, and yeah. and um, not just going through our core range, but also our um, beloved Christmas release that just sold out very quickly and also the flock shots that also sold out very quickly um, just recently and uh finally a work in progress that we're pretty excited to release next year so yeah we're excited to to go on this journey with you guys tonight and enjoy a bit of a tasting together well we could kick off already on uh starting with the first whiskey i don't, don't like uh, you to hang around for too long without having a, a taste so um have a little nose of the of the first ram for the evening which which one are we kicking off the port or the sherry so the first the one we're kicking off with is the port yeah yeah the port 43 Awesome. And you're right, Oliver. It was, I don't know if that was a tongue in cheek comment, but it was a sunny day down here in Tassie. Tassie it, was. It, was, it was like blistering hot, like 24 degrees or something, 25 degrees. It was, it was wonderful. I, I, I cheated. I, I Googled the weather in, Tass in Hobart. I was <laughs> going to ask that question. Yeah. So, but yeah, so the port 43, has everyone, everyone's got one poured up and I'm ready to go. I can see the guys up the top there still. Still pouring. <laughs> We're happy to wait. But the, I suppose the Port 43, for us, maybe internally, it's probably probably the flagship expression, I think, within the core range of Overeem. Uh, it's it's um, commonly referred to, I think, in the market as, uh, as the whiskey that sort of got people into whiskey that uh that, that sort of uh, have ventured into in, into whiskey for for the first time and uh um it's, it's a common reference that we get uh that we that we hear uh it's it's wonderfully soft and and uh and and approachable uh it's it's got all those sort of beautiful port characters um uh and I think it sort of screams sort of like salted caramel and uh and and sort of toffee and um and it's just it's really that super approachable expression that uh that we we always think is a great introduction to to overeem whiskey um yeah so i think i think uh um 
it's something that, that we always like to uh, uh, offer people um, when they come to the distillery to sort of showcase sort of uh, over uh, especially for the first time. Um, and, and it's something that will always, I think, stay in our core range here at over this, uh, in this, this, this port matured expression, you know, five years in a quarter cask, uh, it really sort of is, is, is a flagship expression that we will always continue. We've got a comment from Josh in the audience saying it's not the first whiskey uh, that got him into whiskey, but definitely the whiskey that got him into Overeem. So right. uh, I think it was the same for me. Um, yeah, I was down in the very first Tassie, uh, uh, was it the, yeah, Tassie Whiskey Week at the hotel there at the, um, by the water. It was a, the podcast that got me. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of that any time, any occasion sort of whiskey, I think, hey, like um, uh, good celebratory whiskey, um, Good whiskey, just to you know, to to have socially and a nice sort of everyday sort of dream. So yeah. Question for you, Casey. Why um, why standardize all the ABVs? A lot of Aussie distilleries are mix and match. You you've always kept it at forty three percent and then sixty percent for the cast strength. The reason we did that initially um, was that we didn't want it just to be the lowest ABV that you could basically sell whiskey out that was accepted. Uh, because it was a class whiskey, we thought we'd probably just bring it up to 43%, which was um, uh, more acceptable as a single malt whiskey. Um, and it was very early in its day that we started it. It was very much accepted and it's, it's, it's very drinkable at that strength. Um, and then the 60, rather than um, changing it and having it at, um, at cask strength, which is often between 62 and 64% when we decant, it's a nightmare for labelling. Yeah. So we, have to, we had to choose something. So we thought, well, we very rarely get a barrel that's below 60%. Mm -hmm. um, and, in, in, and if it is, then we have to do it at 43. Um, and it's mainly for those two reasons um, that we, and the labelling, is the main is the number one reason mm -hmm. um unless we do a special run of labels um like jane and mark have been doing lately with the collaboration um releases mm -hmm. and that's a great idea but um what we've done is selected probably the best drinking 60 percent um, um expressions so that people can bring it down themselves to where their preference is if it wants to be higher than 43 percent mm -hmm. That's a good point on the labelling. We, as consumers, don't always think about all the other hidden costs that go into running a distillery. But uh, yeah, it's if you if you have to do custom labels each time, it just we'd we'd be drinking. You know, the, the price would have to go up. You know, month for month, and you know, it's nice to actually have a bit of consistency. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's right. Like Dad said, if you if we're choosing a barrel at sixty, it's generally so good where it is. But then that does give. Um, drinkers the flexibility of bringing it down to whatever strength that they want. So um, we always bottle a cask at 60 um, if it's it's great at 60. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. We've got a few more comments. Grug says, uh, was his first over him as well? I remember Jane uh, calling me asking if it's been shipped to, if it was going to be shipped to Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> and my sure. <laughs> Mike, Mike says always delicious and uh, Jimmy and Alice say typical Aussie whiskey but done so much better than most. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Oh, that's mm, nice. That's Thank awesome. you. Shall we uh, jump on to whiskey number two? Yeah. Goes whiskey number two, <laughs> sherry cask. So again, 43%. What size are your samples, by the way? I believe they are 20 mils. Okay. So enough to get a taste. You're only getting 10, Dad. <laughs> they're they're, they're uh, already rationing me. Yeah, that's right. That's they're, right. They're frightened I might get tongue loose. <laughs> <laughs> we won't shut him up. Uh, did you want some water to make it 43? Uh, okay. and, we, and we got our first time, Lynn, uh, enjoying that first drop. Well, well congratulations. Your first overeem is always special. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I'll just want that. This as well. It's always interesting to compare an Overeem sherry cask next to an Overeem pork cask because it's always we find 50 50 in regards to what people think of it. Yeah, what the um, they are different, but they've got a, 
a style of ovarine that sort of carries through, I think. But, um, yeah, we'd be interested to hear your feedback to see, you know, who prefers the port, who prefers the sherry. Awesome. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, sherry cask? Yep. I'm going to go, Jane. Or do you want me to no, you crack? can talk. Yeah, all right. Dad. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just nosing this one here, and it's, uh, to me, again, a very delicate, um, delicate whiskey. Um, I've just added a little bit of water, but um, for, for no other reason than it brings out the, the notes to me a lot, lot more, a lot more clearly. Um, and so mine's probably down to 30% or something like that. Um, and this, the, the grassy notes there, the citrus notes have come out really strongly at that strength. I'm not trying to encourage, encourage you all to go and tip a, full, a bucket full of water in this whiskey <laughs> at 43. But if you have got a little, uh, a little left, put a couple of drops in with it and see what I'm talking about. Um, it, I did have a mouth full before I put the water with it. And it did have a beautiful oily mouthfeel. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a, a signature of Tasmanian whiskies. Uh, but I think again, Overeem does bring this out very well in its whisky. It's the way we distill our whiskies and our new make that brings out this beautiful oily mouthfeel that you probably get with about eighty-five to ninety percent of our whiskey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good. Question. I was just going to say, uh, Mike uh, from the audience asks, what cast numbers are these? Oh, David, do you possibly know? You're the one who did the, the bottling. I might unmute you for a second. It's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah, have you got them right. written down? Yeah, yeah. You're still muted, David. <laughs> uh, um, I've, I haven't got the sherry cask here, but the port cask is um, OD316. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. So it's probably a point worth making now yeah. that all of these whiskies were single cask. obviously single cask, as it may have already been mentioned, but like uh, they, were, they were also all all made in in the original Oakram Stillhouse in Casey's um, in Casey's front yard. So um, uh, we were when when the brand was acquired back, uh, as J Jane mentioned in July this year, we were. We were Probably 90% of the stock that came with the purchase um, uh, uh, or the acquisition um, was all was all made in in Casey's front in in, Ca in the original Overeem Steelhouse. So mm. um, and all and all sort of uh, um, enjoyed, I suppose, or maybe experienced uh, the same maturation environment uh, that that uh, maybe apart from. A couple of months, maybe maybe twelve months or something. That then, as to what uh, is which sort of aligns with the Overeem philosophy. That sort of cool climate, sort of um, uh, concrete, sort of uh, uh, bunker, bunker uh, yeah, concrete warehouse um, um, the maturation environment that we provide, which we think um, uniquely uh, uh, matures Overeem spirit and presents the Overeem spirit. Mm. Mm. The, the bunker is impressive. You you wouldn't know there's a bond store under that building. Mm. <laughs> yeah, anyone that hasn't been to our uh, concrete bunker, we'd love to show you. If you're uh, ever in Tasmania, we'd love to, to show you around. I, I do I do remember the first time you're driving through suburbia, the old still house. You turn up at this random cul-de-sac, essentially. You go up a little yeah. driveway up a hill. There's a house on the left, a the garage, normal four-by-four-looking garage. The garage door opens and there's a still in there. And the whole thing's kitted out with, you know, amazing copper and always polished. Uh, I know Casey looks after it and just like, what is this doing here in the middle of suburbia? It's uh, in a random place in Hobart of all places. But uh, uh, maybe Casey, how, how did it all get started very quickly for you? Um, I, I believe you uh, got a bit of distilling background from the Scandinavians or something. I did, and I'll, go, I'll touch on that uh, bit of history a little later on when we talk about the Man of Promise. Ah. Awesome. Um, so if you don't mind there, uh, sure. that I do that. But um, as far as the, uh, the, the the start of our distilling processes in, um, in, in the little shed you're referring to, um, I was going to put, put it in, a, in what we call the top shed, which was an old motorbike shed. Um, but I couldn't, uh, I, couldn't for, I, could, I couldn't let loose of that area. And so I built another little shed and the council would only allow me a home business with 36 square meters. Um, otherwise, it had to be in a commercial, commercial. area. Mm. So I was limited to that space. So here we were with these two, what to me were quite stills. whopping stills. <laughs> <laughs> they, 
that had to fit into a, um, a, a 36 square metre shed. So the ceiling went up, as, you, as those that have been there know, it's a little bit of like a Dutch gable inside. Yes, like this. Um, and uh, yeah, to, to accommodate the tallest of the stools. Um, but it was a fantastic little workspace um, that did everything we needed to do. Um, and of course, we weren't doing our brewing there. We were only doing the distilling there. So the, the, the brewing was actually done uh, for us out at Cambridge at that early stage. And um, uh, it was Bill Lark, uh, and, uh, who was also just in his early years and couldn't entirely afford um, a, a full-time brewer. Um, so when I came along and said, look, if you do my brew and I buy that off you, that'll just about pay for the, for the brewer. And uh, that's how it all came about. So mm -hmm. for the next, well, I think basically all the time up until 2014, so it was almost 10 years, um, they, were, they were brewing for the Overeem Distillery yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. under strict guidelines from myself. Uh, with even our own uh, fermenters. Mm -hmm. So they weren't allowed to use my fermenters to do uh, brew lark. They had to use only ovarine fermenters and um, our combination of yeast. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that, that kept us apart from each other. Yeah, I was going to ask, how, how do you keep the two, you know, separate? But if your wash is very different compared to Bill's and you, every part of the process is different, you know, having the same brewer mix it up is not going to really affect it much. Yeah. That's no. right. Hopefully everyone at home uh, knows how whiskey is made. I can give you the very quick 30 second is you get a bunch of barley water, you grind it up together, you add some yeast, it starts fermenting, you distill it twice. Uh, the, the, the wash, what we call the wash is a badly brewed beer without hops. You distill it twice, it turns into a new make whiskey, you chuck it in a barrel, minimum two years in Australia, it's called whiskey. That's Whiskey 101. Whiskey 101. Well said. <laughs> like yeah, it. very great. We all know it. It's way more complicated. It's like being <laughs> a, a chemist or an alchemist making magic. Um, but yeah, that's that's Whiskey 101. But um, yeah, that's those are the first two whiskeys. I've asked the question to the group. Maybe you want to uh, put your answers in the chat. Uh, do you prefer the port or the sherry out of the two so far? Do, do, you, do you have a favourite, Jane? Look, I'm always more partial to the port. Um, yeah, port. I've always been a lover of the port cast. What about you, Mark? Probably the same. Maybe more from nostalgia than anything. It was probably the first um, uh, ovarian that I was introduced to uh, back in the back in the day uh, when I first met Jane. So uh, yeah. um, that, that sort of, yeah, probably from a nostalgia perspective, I think the port's probably my go-to. Yeah. Awesome. Casey? I Oh, yeah. um, I'm a bit impartial, but I um, again, I think when I get one of those one of those casks, uh, the sherry casks that are, uh, I mean, some of them are just so good. Yeah. I don't often release them; I drink them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, th th there's some some um, some expressions that have come out because it's all single cask that are just so good that I would say uh, it's it's it tops even some of our best uh, port ones. Yeah. Um, but generally, the feel is our port cask, um, and probably personally, my uh, I drink more port port matured whiskey than um, yeah. I'm reading the comments now, Chris. I'm with you. I love the sherry, sixty percent, um, and I can see Alice's first time prefers the port, cool. more approachable. Yeah. yeah. I think the sherry's got a slightly dry finish to it. Um, port sort of maybe a little bit longer and it's got that sweeter sort of mouthfeel overall, I think. But, uh, mm. And yeah. it varies from cask to cask. Does, yeah. What yeah. you'll find with our single cask whiskies is that they are very similar um, and it's quite often uh, the case that you'll only be able to compare the pair um, and you'll find that the port casks are very similar across the board. But when you actually sit them next to one another, you will notice slight, slight variations. So that's, I think, the beauty of a single cask. Yeah. I actually had a question about it. So when you uh, are bottling any, even of these standard ports and sherry matured, is it a batch bottling or a single cask? Single cask single bottling cask. or single yeah. cask bottlings, yeah. Okay, so you get out of the barrel as many bottles as it fills and that's it. So each each numbering at the back is going to refer to that cask and that cask alone. And once it's gone, it's, it's, it's gone, right? Yeah, correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
hopefully that makes sense to everyone at home. So that's, yeah, there's no, there's no Solero system. There's no blending. It's just what's straight out of the barrel uh, at 43%. That's what you're getting. Yeah. That's correct. And, and in all our, how many years of production or decanting since of barrels? Since 2005. Since 2000 and, well, since we were decanting barrels, we've never had a bad barrel where we've decanted it and gone, we can't release this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've had barrels that are obviously competition barrels where we like, we are, oh, this is amazing. We have to enter it into a competition. Um, or, and we've had barrels that have been good, but we've never had any barrels that are average or below, um, which has been really cool. And we always thought it was going to be a bit of a risk when we're locking ourselves into single pass bottlings. Mm -hmm. I think it's an indication of like the systems that, that have been in place from a production perspective, like Casey sort of mentioned before with the, uh, the strict systems from a brewing perspective. But um, I learned very early on, I suppose, that I was Casey's apprentice, you know, like three or four or five years ago. And uh, I learned very early on that there is a, there is a, a particular way that things must be done. Uh, and it is definitely the over -end way. And, and any variance on that is just, whether it be 1% is just not acceptable. I, I remember on day one, Casey said to me that near enough is awful. So uh, uh, he goes, use that philosophy throughout everything you do at the distillery. And so I, th I think that's probably represented in, in that consistency that Jane refers to with from cast to cast. Although they are single cast, uh, the quality is there. Um, yeah. And it probably also relates to the relationships we've got with the Cooperages. Uh, I think that uh, maintaining a strong relationship with, with, with Coopers that are able to source really good, good wood from, uh, from, from wineries in our case and, uh, um, and, and, and from the States uh, with our bourbon matured stock, uh, I think it's, it's super important. And, and we're still sourcing really good ex-fortified wood at the moment. Um, so we've got lots of confidence moving forward. I was going to ask, where where is the wood for the sherry and the um, port from? Are they all Aussie wineries overseas or a mix? It's a mix at the moment, yeah. So, like, uh, um, it really depends on on what we get presented with to an extent. Like, uh, uh, Cooper, uh, Cooperage might come to us and say we can access... We can just see our little boy in the back. That's there. fine. <laughs> um, oh, <thank> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it really depends. Um, we will a, a, a Cooperage will come to us and say we've got access to some this this amazing wood from 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 Europe, uh, um, or uh, alternatively from 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 local wineries, and uh, uh, and we'll we'll check it out, have a look at it, and 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 we'll we'll take things from there. Mm. Um, awesome. Yeah, but, but, but sourcing good wood for us currently has not been a problem, which mm. is which we're really fortunate for. Uh, the quality has been the same constant, consistently throughout the years. But uh, Grug's got a question. Uh, do you um, do any second fill barrels? Um, maybe I can time. answer that. Yeah. Um, when we, we, we first started decanting, so that was five years after, uh, uh, after we started production, um, we decided to fill um, 30. We, we, we did 30 second fill barrels. Um, there, we've, we've now just had a couple of those. Um, so that's the 10 year mark. And, well, yeah, they, they, they matured, but they took um, seven to eight years to come to the level that we, were, we thought was acceptable. Um, and then they still weren't as good. So after those 30 barrels, we went and thought it's, um, uh, that, that was a trial. And as far as we're concerned, for the quality that um, our customers are used to, we're going to have to continue with first fill only. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, because the um, it, it just does not have the body and the mouth fill after the second time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, not for our spirit anyway. Yeah. What, what happens to these barrels? They, they get moved on or? We're, yeah, we're moving breweries. a lot of them onto breweries at the moment, mm -hmm. actually. All our barrels that we've decanted this financial year have gone to breweries. Yep. Everyone. They're very sought after. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they're aging their beer in them, which mm. is cool. Awesome. I, I love the whole community aspect of this whole distillation yeah. industry. Everything's used, nothing's left to to it back of a shed rotting or anything like that. So, yeah. so, so just um just to go a little bit further, that these um so, so these uh, barrels they've still got six litres of or up to six litres of whiskey in the wood. 
Um, yeah. So the tear weight has increased by about five kilo uh, from when they were when they were first filled. Um, and so that five, that six litres is going to the brewery and is getting sucked out by the beer. Mm. Uh, although some would go to the atmosphere. And then um, there's been some experimenting now of the whiskey going back into the barrel mm. um, after the beer's been matured or, or seasoned uh, in there. So that, that's something happening at the moment. And it'll be very interesting to see what sort of results that brings. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. I might use this opportunity now to uh, switch over to our, our one. We have a, a very quick game of uh, Anna Drams. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen our Game of Drams okay. episode, uh, but yeah, uh, David has put um, five. Uh, is it? I might just quickly unmute you, David. If you're there. David, uh, are they Tassie or Aussie distilleries? They're all Tasmanian distilleries. So that narrows it down a bit. So a bit of a clue. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, the... Uh, the the crew can use their their first names as their buzzers, and they can uh, jump in if they know which one which it is. Yeah, Are like we it. going against each other? Yeah. 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 Okay, I have to put my glasses. Right. So I'll I'll put them all up on screen. We'll go one by one. Uh, for our audience members, if you know what it is, just type it in. Uh, see if you can beat the clock. Oh, uh, no, I'll, I'll close my chat box. <laughs> but then. It, yeah, you guys close your chat. So you, just for now, you don't see the answers come in. Or we'll see, and I'll, I'll see if the, the audience gets it before you guys. But um, okay. we're about to share now. Let's share screen. All right. Number one, Barn Gypsy. Casey. Casey? <laughs> Spring Bay. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, it's close. Oh. David, you, you got the answers. Oh, good, it is. Yes. Spring Bay it is. Oh, oh. Dad, you Brilliant. Oh, too okay. quick. Number two, uh, Cheryl Delora. Oh, Cheryl Delora. Um, oh, it's not. What is that? <laughs> oh, Lorini? No. No, 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 it's not. No, no it's not. Um, um, no, it's not. Give you a clue. The, the distillery name is also two words. Okay. okay. Uh, Hellier Road. Hellier's Road. <laughs> oh, no way. There you go, Casey. Very yeah. quick. You yeah, just yeah, pull it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Number, number three, Villa Convulses. Convulses. <laughs> Devil Distillery. No. Another another two two word distillery name. We're hopeless, aren't we? <laughs> uh, we're spending too much time in our own world. Yeah, it's because someone from the audience has got it. Ah, uh, who? Uh, Thomas, shall I uh, let yep. let me get out? It's uh, yep. Sullivan's Cove. Oh, oh I did, but I can't believe you didn't even get that. Oh, I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. I was looking at yeah, okay. Look at this bloodthirsty Dahlia. Yeah, number four, <laughs> bloodthirsty Dahlia. That's a three-word distillery. Oh, right. Okay. Mm, yeah, okay. This is a... <laughs> <laughs> the last one I did of this sort of tasting was way easier. It was all in one. Um, it's because it's okay. split up into um, two. <laughs> something distillery. Any, anyone else from the audience? Yeah, Casey's getting there. He's... Yeah, if you take the distillery out of it. It's got two O's in it then. Um, it's got to be... Um... <sighs> no, can't see Put them out their misery, are they? Yeah, put them out of our misery. What is it, David? It's old Hobart Distillery. Oh, oh that, that's not counted. That, does, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but I had to put it in. Admit it, I had to put it in. I, I never would have got that's that. Fair. I'm so that's, glad you put us out of our misery. Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. Um, okay, I can't even do this. For, for um, those at home who, who don't get the connection, that's the name of um, what Overeem Distillery was. Uh, Belgrove. Belgrove, it is Bog Lever. There you <laughs> go. That's the only one I got. <gasps> awesome. Very I tough. Think, I, think, uh, I think Casey took that one out. Definitely. Definitely. Did. Definitely did. <laughs> He's, 
the yeah, older, I, the wiser. I just, uh, I'm really disappointed I didn't get my own one. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I tried to load it in Casey's favor, but he, he didn't, didn't take the bait. <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. I like it. All right. All right. Shall we, uh, whiskey number three? Mm. Which oh, one our was? work in progress. Was it the work in progress? Yeah. Yep. So that's the bourbon cask. Was it Flock Shots? No. Oh, no, Flock oh, Shots. It was Flock Shots. Which, which one's going to be less heavier on the palate? Because the, the flock shot's quite creamy. Yeah, I think mm. we go flock shots because we've just done the port and sherry. Probably ties in pretty well. Um, we thought flock shots is a marriage of port and sherry, so we could go flock shots. All right, let's get the flock shots going. Yep. Mm. All right. No, it went flock shots, which we were missing. Mm. Mm. Did you guys save yourself a bottle of the flock shots? No, we actually haven't got any with us tonight, but we know what it tastes like. Awesome. Well, uh, let everyone quickly pour it at home. But if you want to give us a very quick overview of what are flock shots, that's, I think, the, the question of the I hour. Think I think it's pretty fitting if, if Casey, Casey does around. this one. It was his idea from the, from the get-go. I just want to do that. Yeah, um, yeah all right. So flock shots, what are they? Um, that's a process of settling. When um, when we add water to the um, whiskey that's at cask strength to bring it down to 43%, um, it has a, a sort of chemical reaction, I would say, um, over the next six weeks. And in that six weeks, um, the uh, the the uh, it starts to form what's called flock. So so molecules join together in the in the spirit and. Um, and they, 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 they sort of start to cling together and they'll, um, and they'll, and they'll start to settle out of the whiskey. Um, but these also hold a lot of the flavor of the, uh, of the, um, yeah, of the, of the spirit or of that particular whiskey. Um, and so we take the, the, the first half of the, the, the settling barrel out um, when it's cleared and then the flock settles down a further 50%. Um, and then you've got to take that out. And at the end of the time, you've got about 20 litres left. Um, that's got this flock in it that you're seeing in your bottles before you shake it up. So we've got to be very careful not to shake up our, um, our barrels, uh, our drums, that, our settling drums. You can see it in there. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's... Um, uh, it was. It, it then goes. That that ten liters would then go, or twenty liters would then go into a into another tub, um, and start settling again. Uh, and we would draw some more off that, um, and, and continually draw off until you're just left with that um, with that cloudy stuff. And that went into a bucket, and 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 built up over time. And when visit, uh, guests came to the distillery, um, I'd often say. Here you are. And here's here's what flock looks like. Um, and anyway, we started giving them a shot of this flock, and it was called flock shots. <laughs> so it was part of just a bit of fun for visitors to the distillery. Mm. But everybody seemed to say, "Wow, that's really tasty." Mm. Um, and so it was Mark and Jane's idea uh, to say, "Right, let's let's actually bottle it." I wasn't really that much in favour of it because I thought a whole lot of whiskey going out there that's um, cloudy. That's, that's cloudy. Yeah. Then we spent so much time trying to get out of it, mm. and now you're putting it back in. Mm. Um, but anyway, so we um, we did that. We we used the flock that had been settled out from about twenty barrels, um, and we put about another. What was it? Sixty liters of whiskey with it. Yeah. yeah. So yep. it was sixty sixty liters of settled whiskey, which would. I mean, maybe lack of a better term, maybe filtered whiskey without using a filter for whiskey that had settled out, and mm. then, and then about yeah, about thirty liters, thirty to forty liters of um of of a flock, of flock. Mm. so a flock concentrate, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So um, and we sent this off to the guys at the whiskey list and whiskey lovers, and uh, uh, we were really happy with it. Um, so it, it is unique in many ways too, because it is actually a marriage of Port and sherry casks, which, which is we something don't we've do. never done at Overeem before. Mm. So it was it was definitely something left of field for, for, for what Overeem is usually uh, uh, um, or what is what we've usually released. 
Um, but the feedback we got from from the guys at the whiskey list and, and, and whiskey lovers was was incredible. So we were and we were really happy with it. So we were like, well, let's do it. Let's um, let's yeah. release it, and, um, and we're really happy with the response we've heard as well. Yeah. We, we had only 100 bottles, uh, 6 minutes, 43 seconds. Mm. It went like crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then I got a barrage of emails, messages on Facebook. Uh, people were texting me going, do you have any more? Do you have any put aside? Uh, the whiskey list, we didn't even put one aside for ourselves. I only got one bottle. Um, so this is the very first time I'm just trying it. It just went like hotcakes. Uh, we... Hopefully, if the Overeem team uh, sell enough whiskey, because the make flock, you got to decant the barrels. Then maybe this time next year, we might do another flock shot release. It's been so popular. If they if they would let us, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, it's a beautiful story of how this uh, collaboration has come about. Sorry, you back? We're back. Yep, We're sorry, back. guys. Sorry. Yeah, keep going. I was just explaining how, um, yeah, if it all goes well, if you buy lots of ovarian, they decant more barrels, they get more flock, and then yes. hopefully we'll get enough flock uh, built up for another release, hopefully next year this time as well. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, cool. Bernard, I see you've just joined the tasting. Have you missed the tasting? No, we're still going hard. We've uh, just done whiskey number three. So we started with the port. Then number two is the sherry matured expression. And now we're on just finishing up the ovarian flock shots uh whiskey lovers uh, expression so yeah what's what's everyone in the audience think about this one um oh yeah i'll get the chat back up we've got uh mike says more i, I definitely agree mate we'll, we'll hopefully get to more like i said drink buy more ovarian they'll decant more barrels we'll get more flock we can do more flock shots yeah. uh there we go alice alice uh, says the hype is definitely justified yeah um What was that, the question there? Heat yeah, filtration. Question, yeah. How does filtration by settling compare to filtration, chill filtration? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you want to answer it? Or do you want me to? You oh, can, I'm, yeah. I'm easy either way. Um, I, think, I think chill filtration is probably frowned upon uh, a little bit from a traditional perspective. It feels as though it strips a lot of the oils and a lot of the flavours uh, um, from the whiskey. Uh, it, it, it can change the mouthfeel um, and, and, and can take away that sort of richness that, that, that uh, especially from specifically with Overeem, it's mm. something that we wouldn't consider uh, uh, for those reasons. We really love the mouthfeel and that richness that, that you get from an Overeem whiskey and, uh, and, and, and chill filtration. Uh, obviously, it speeds up the process, which is a real attraction from a commercial perspective. Like Casey mentioned, the timeframes involved in settling out, like mm. we're talking six, eight, 10 weeks, even sometimes more, depending on the climate. Um, and, and, and that's a real... That's a that, you know that that's obviously a challenge from a commercial uh, um, from a commercial point of view, um, where, where chill filtration um, is you can bottle immediately after decanting, mm. um, but the impact that it has on the whiskey is something that um, that we feel in our case is a negative. Yeah, is that the yeah? Answer? It's very good, well said, and I think um, that there's there's people that are some of the uh, distilleries that are now in much higher production. Um, they have to. They're gonna. They have to do that because it's just too big a job and too and too many settling um, tanks to do them. Yeah. Especially if you're doing single cast bottlings, it yeah. makes it almost impossible yeah, to do can't. a single cast bottling. Yeah. Um, but watch this space because next year, um, if I might just say, we're um, we're going to do, I think, three or four very special releases. Um, we're not ones to do special release every week. Um, and they will be different. Mm. That one will, one will no doubt be, I can let this one out of the bag, but one will be um, a, a non-settled. So it'll have the, um, the flock. The flock will occur after bottling. The flocking will occur in the bottle, after the bottle, after it's been um, decanted. Yeah. It'll be broken down to 43%. Um, and then, uh, and then, and then corked and bottled, or bottled and corked, and that's how you'll receive it. But there'll only be about one off in that year, and then there'll be something else special about three or four months later. So these three or four special releases will go out next year. 
That's, that's awesome to hear. Josh uh, just commented, can I pre-order one now, mate? Sign up to the Overing newsletter on their website, on, the, on their socials. They, they will uh, tell their members first, I believe, is the, the way uh, Overing works. So if you, you're not signed up to their newsletter, then yeah, um, they first come first serve to their members, uh, I believe. Do you, um, do you play with any other cast types or is it always the bourbons, the sherries and the ports? We do have some, uh, some other fortified expressions down. So we've got some, um, uh, some tokays, some muskets, and we've got a number of PXs down as well. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're still we, five, four years away? Yeah, three, three. They're yeah, probably two to three years old at the moment. So, yeah, probably another two to three, maybe four years away, some of them. Um, we may look at some marriages down the track. Uh, we may look at some finishes uh, as well, some, some different cast finishes. Uh, uh, it really, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to keep an eye on the market and see what the market um, are looking for and, and are wanting and see how that aligns with sort of our philosophy as well. And keeping an eye on our whiskey and seeing what it needs. Mm. Awesome. Maybe a stout cast release if you're getting the barrels back from the breweries. Mm. Yeah, actually, well, that's a good point. I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. actually, I forgot. Um, but next year, maybe end of next year, following of uh, 2022, we've got a... Um, a cast that's going to be very interesting, and it's um, it's beer. It's just beer um, instead of wash, like yeah. wash with it. Yeah, it's it's beer with beer. the hops yeah, instead yeah. of um, yeah. We distilled beer with the hops instead of without the hops. Hmm. So that'll be interesting to uh, to see. Yeah, I think a few distilleries. I think Star with um, one of their beer partners have recently done that a couple of times. Um, yep. For 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 those who don't know, the Australian laws around how to call whiskey and all that that's quite lax we can a lot more innovation in the australian industry uh chris ross the other partner of the whiskey list uh, calls those releases uh he wants to get the term beer ski going yeah, yeah. yeah very good yeah um thomas actually says heard some people claim that distilling hot beer ruins the stills that's a, I have no idea how to answer that one. Ah. Yeah, we, I'm not sure about it. We only did. did it was one. only one run yeah. for us. It was only one distillation. So uh, we have, we didn't notice anything different uh, immediately after. So, uh, but potentially um, ongoing ongoing distillation with um, with, with hot wash, maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure. Couldn't comment on it. Mm. Just a fun experiment, you know, just to mix up the day a bit. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Shall we uh, try whiskey number four? Yes. Yeah, so this is the work in progress. Is that right? Yes. The bourbon cast. That's for some people's uh, oh, bourbon cast. No, 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 I'm calling it a work in progress. Is um, it's, it's almost a finished progress. Yeah, I think <laughs> finished it's, uh, project. I think it's delicious. Um, it's the, but I wanted to ask cast. though. I, I wasn't sure what strength you guys received it at. Uh, it says sixty-two percent on the oh, little right. label here. Yeah. Pass. yeah. yeah. Because we had forgotten and we actually grabbed ours straight out of the cask today. Um, so it's like only a couple of weeks older. Um, but we just weren't sure if, if yours was broken down yet or not. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You want me to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, please. Please do, Casey. Um, so this was distilled by me um, 12 years ago. Um, it's uh, in a 200 litre cask. Um, which was pretty rare at that time um, for Tasmanian. It was the first, I think, for Tasmanian whiskey other than Sullivan's Cove. So Lark and um, myself uh, and uh, um, uh, Patrick from Sullivan's Cove, we, we bought a container load of 200 litre barrels from Heaven Hill and then, um, and then filled them. Um, and that it was in 2008. Um, so, it was at a time when I was only producing about uh, 50 barrels a year. So this took a fair chunk out of you know, my production and it's now sat around for 12 years. So with the sale of Overeem, those barrels went with that sale. And now with the purchase back of Overeem, they've come back to us. So I was really, really happy to get this just before it became 12 years old. Amazing. Um, and to me, it is uh, the epitome of bourbon uh, bourbon matured whiskey it is just so delicious mm. so uh, to me that's uh, it's everything that I hoped it would be 
Um, mm. Anyway, the re the judging can be up to you guys. <laughs> yeah, this is actually eleven years old. Um, it's two thousand and two thousand nine. It'll be hitting twelve years in in twenty one. Where yeah, we think really. it presents so yeah. well at the moment that we're we're really confident that we're going to release it. Um, Probably in the second quarter to third quarter next year. Um, yeah. That's sort of like where we're sort of earmarked it. Um, at what percentage, we're not sure. Um, but uh, we're, we're really excited to see this whiskey um, in people's hands uh, sometime next year. Uh, I, um, I don't know about you guys, but I just opened up mine with a, a, a decent little dash of water. And for me, it's just so good. With that bit of water i mean it might be a little different for you because uh yours has already been in your sample bottles for a little while um but we grabbed ours straight out of the cast today so it's probably a little um not not rough but it's, it's just hot, for me no, it's a little bit me. much so yeah. i just added that bit of water and i just reckon it's just opened up so beautifully um and it just reminds me of our our very rare bourbon casks that we've released in the past um I think we've only released five um, 100 litre bourbon casks in the past. Um, so we've really, we haven't, we haven't had many of them either uh, to enjoy and taste. So tasting this one again is just, it's just great. Please tell me you got more laid down already or you're still laying more barrels. Yeah, 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 we do. We're doing a lot of bourbon casks now. So we're mm. filling one 100 litre bourbon cask every time that we fill a port in a sherry. Every week? Mm. Yeah, so every week. A couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, and we're filling a lot of 200 litre bourbon casks now too. Um, we have done so for the past two years. Um, so that's that's really a big strategy for us going forward for the future of Overeem is that we're going to be releasing a lot of 200 litre cask, eight to 10 year old bourbons, bourbon casks. Uh, this, this is exceptional. I love the nose on it. There's a lot of comment, comments coming through about people missing the bourbon casks. They're getting toffee. Um, I'm getting a bit of citrus on the nose actually, which yeah, is very good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, for those who, who don't know in terms of the different wood types, bourbon cask is ex bourbon because they in America for making bourbons, you can only use virgin oak once it's decanted they can't use it legally again so they send it out to other distilleries the scotch industry loves it but um because it's so light a lot of vanilla toffee flavors all that comes through but uh, the spirit the original new make spirit shines a lot because it's not um overpowered by a lot of those ex wine casts like the ports and the sherries so what you're tasting here is like the true heart and spirit of overeem um that's kind of the flavors i, I personally think that are coming through Mm. I've just yeah. seen I've just seen marzipan come through, and I love that. I love that marzipan, mm. that almonds that comes mm. through in a bourbon casks. I think it's a really good point you make, though, Oliver, about that sort of um, uh, how well it's balanced. I, I feel as though, like, as in the over, I get a lot of like those over in new make characteristics that we see off straight off the still, and I just think that time in the cask and and. Uh, and 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 the, it's got I mean it's got a lot of cask influence, but it's 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 really sort of subtle and, and it's well balanced. I think it really lets the new make shine. I think it's 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 excellent. It's and it excellent. does. It shows that the longer, the more refined, because it is just so much more refined. Mm. Mm. Was this a two hundred or one hundred liter cask? Two hundred. Yeah. That's why I could age it a little bit longer with those harsh uh, tazzy conditions. Yeah. Mm. So we've got two of these reaching yeah 12 years old next we've got two of them that we've really got an eye on that we're looking at, at releasing next year so we're anywhere between five to seven hundred bottles of this expression will come out next year yeah. um well this cask and then another cask following yeah i think we had a question from the audience um yeah. about releasing it uh will it be cast strength or, or down to 43 percent or a bit of both oh it's going to be an argument yeah, i reckon because I, I love yeah. it lower mm -hmm. but you probably I would like I would like to think that we might yes, yes. be able Casting. to do um, what I had to do with our first 100 litre casks, and that was um, because there were so few of them, was to split it, and we did about um, one third of the cask. I mean, about half the cask um, at 60 percent, and then the other half at 43 percent. Yeah, good call. Um, yeah. And that gives us two price points as well. Yeah. Um, but for those that really like a, a higher strength whiskey, they can still have that opportunity um, out of this cast. 
Mm-hmm. And this is why we still love talking to Dad about all our releases. Mm. <laughs> but I love some of these comments that are coming through too, guys. Because it's, um, it's, yeah, okay. it's great to hear. Dad can't read them. I'll have to put so my specs read them on. out, Oliver, because we love right. hearing what yeah. you, you guys are saying. So for those at home who don't know, CS obviously stands for car strength. But um, if I go back up the, the comments, uh, David says, so floral on the nose. Mike says, wow. Um, Josh says, uh, please tell me you're releasing this at car strength. Uh, Jimmy, on behalf of Alice, says, I, I won't repeat that one. Uh, but there might be kids about. Uh, Grug says, agree, car strength release. Uh, David, car strength. Uh, there's a few here. Bear with me, still trying to yank out the stopper. So, Bernard, hopefully, uh, maybe get some pliers or a screwdriver. Um, sometimes we, we, we don't want any leakages. So, David works really hard to make sure zero leakages occur in his samplings. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel for you, Bernard. Uh, Alice, just going down. I miss the bourbon cask, Greg. I, I definitely agree. I tried this um, last time at the uh, distillers dinner uh, in Tassie a few years ago. So, yeah, it's been a long time uh, since between the bourbon casks and, and been very wait, waiting patiently. As soon as uh, yeah, Chris, the business partner of TWL, said we're doing an overroom tasting, we're doing an overroom release. I said, can we get the bourbon cask? <laughs> because yeah. it's coming out soon. I, they said uh, around five years to go. That, um, yeah, it's right on the money, I think. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very clean fragrances, Bernard. Awesome. 200 makes sense. Cast strength both. Please cast strength so we can dilute accordingly to taste. That's, that's a good yeah. point, Bernard. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. The masses have spoken. You have no choice but to release it at cast strength. <laughs> Thanks, <Sean. laughs> We've got two casks. So um, that, that, that we've got an eye on. So maybe we'll do one at one, one at one at a, at a lower rate. Or we do Dad's suggestion and split both. We'll split them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh. Lynn, your, and Lynn, your comment hasn't gone unnoticed. Yes, sure, Dad has retired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, Lynn, now Casey's got the best job in the world. Like the business yeah. runs smoothly. He can just pop in when he wants to, get a tasting going, try the cast, and then walk home. No paperwork, not worrying about, yeah. you know, the, the, the kids have got it all sorted. He, he's got the best job in the world now, retirement. Is that yeah. open, Mike, that bottle? That, oh, that looks great, Mike. Empty, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Dad's got the best job in the world, but it's not that easy, Oliver. He he bottled 350 bottles in the last 48 hours. That was a good effort, I think. Oh, it's, you you got to work for those uh, sample casts, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> good job, Oliver. Well said. Yeah. Awesome. And, and Josh is asking, can you buy one of those casks? So I'll let you guys take that, that conversation when we're offline, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think everyone here would love a, a bourbon casting themselves, but, uh, you know, we've we got to share share the, the product around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm um, not trying to advertise to you guys, but do join our mailing list because that's where we'll let people know when this cask is available. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and tell all your friends so that you've got less chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, no. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just joking there. Oh, no, it's, it's good. We want to definitely share and promote the Overeem family one of my favorite Tassies uh, out there and for a long time. I think it was the first Tassie I fell in love with as well. So, but uh, Casey, do you want to take us through the, the very last whiskey, the Man of Promise? What was this this fabulous? Uh, this is good. <laughs> why, why, why name it Man of Promise? I'm, I'm hoping there's a story there. Good question. Yeah, this is your yeah. answer, Corny. I'll give you the answer very shortly, but James is I'm just pouring Dad one. I will hold it up. Not a lot of people know, actually. Oh, the shrink cap. Did people, people from know. here get a bottle or did they miss out? Um, Doesn't matter, but for those that didn't get one, this was what it uh, looked like. Um, and uh, I think Mark and Jane did a really good job um, with the um, with the with the guy that does the uh, does the labels um, to present to present this the way it was and the way it is. Um, but yeah, man of promise. That was a bit of a surprise to me. Uh, a very ple- a very pleasant one, and it was set up because. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was to do with uh, the very early stages of um, of, um, of over in whiskey and my my desire to make whiskey, and that was uh, back in 1980 when I was in Norway. You may most of you may have heard this story, but for those that haven't, uh, I went there for my honeymoon. My uh, wife's Norwegian, and uh, her uncle had a little micro distillery in his cellar. Anyway, after having been through that, um, 
and uh, I had a real desire to do and make whiskey when I got home. I got home, made a still. Um, it was a sort of contraption that looked a bit like a still, but anyway, it did produce neutral spirit, and from there, things progressed. Um, and then I said to Greta, um, one day, I'm going to make a whiskey that will sit next to the best whiskies on, in the world. And um, she just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that, that, uh, that's a story that I told the guy who, um, what do you call him? The, he designs uh, all the bottles. He designs bottles the bottles. And, uh, yeah, our and the brand labels, manager. Our brand manager, I suppose. Yeah. And um, he said, so you, you carried out that promise. And then when he produced the, all the all the parts of that bottle and the capsule, on the capsule he put man a uh, born of promise. Oh, I don't right. know if you can, can see you read that. that. If you ever buy an ovarium, you can see at the top there on the capsule it says born of promise. And that's the story behind what's on the capsule, born of promise. Mm. And then it was Jane and Mark who came up with um, the idea to call it. Uh, man, man, of, of, man promise. of promise because I did make that promise a long time ago that I would make a quality whiskey rather than the bootlegging crap that I made in 1980. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for those who actually um, managed to get one online, that sold pretty quickly as well. Um, it's There's a little uh, gift card around the, uh, the neck and it says that 20 years ago, Dad made this promise to himself, but it actually was 40 mm. years. Mm, 40, 40 years. We didn't realise the promise was actually 40 years ago. So, And I think, I, I can't remember who said Casey had retired before. It might have been Lynn, I think I heard yeah. you say. Dad will never retire. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's probably quite fitting to sort of tell this or keep going on this story um, with regards to that because we gave Casey a call. Uh, maybe oh, maybe two months ago now and said, this. yeah, and we're like, Casey, we really want to do a cask, you know, in dedication to yourself for Christmas because, you know, Christmas is so, you know, it's, it's such a fun time of the year for for, for, for most. And uh, we're like, can you come down to the distillery and go through every cask that we've got here and pick your, pick your five favourites and, 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 and take a sample of each home and, and, and pick, pick your favourite for, for, for this special release we want to do. And so, yes, he's retired. We do call on him every now and then, but I think it was a... Uh, a pretty fun job. I think you jumped on it pretty quickly, Katie, uh, by memory. I think you were like, yeah, I'll come for sure, absolutely. I did, and now you wonder why I've got a red nose. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just say that um, this is the... Uh, personification of Christmas in a bottle. Yeah, well, that's good because it's funny yeah, because um, Cheers as you probably already know, there's no there's no colouring, there's nothing added to the bottle um, or anything, you know, add, nothing added to the whiskey. Um, it is a, just a single cask over him like all our other casks, but Dad lined them up and he, he wanted to choose the one that represents Christmas, that represents the real flagship over in um, Port Cast Matured, and that was this cask. So, mm. yeah. I'm getting a, a bit of gingerbread on the nose, which is completely different to the palate. Um, a light bit of spice and sweetness, and then it's just, uh, just a lot of wonderful sugars on, on, on the palate, and the finish is warm and everlasting. It's, yeah, gorgeous dram. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. And we were able to bottle this at 48 because it was a special label, it was a special choice. Um, and yeah, you tried it at 43 and you said, oh, it just needs that little bit more punch. So yeah. Um, yeah. 48 was where, where it was at. Josh uh, asks, uh, please tell me you have a couple bottles tucked, you know, maybe for sale for, for special members on this tasting tonight. We have no more. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we actually, yeah, we, We've got a funny story to tell, actually. Um, we sold these out completely, right? We did a really good count of exactly how many bottles there were and we sold them all out. And and two nights ago, I got this uh, message on my Facebook message app with uh, a picture from Chris Greenwood, who's on here tonight, Greg. <laughs> and um, he had a, he had a, a, his man of promise, full and he signed bottles, and yeah. beautiful. And the second man of promise that he ordered. Uh, and it was about this, this full. And he said, oh, Jane, yeah, there you go. There you go. And he said, oh, Jane, uh, my man of promise arrived today, but there's an issue with one of them. And I just laughed and yeah, I was like, oh, I thought he's already drank it. 
Um, and then I, re I looked at it closely and I was like, that hasn't been signed. It's got no card around the neck. It's got no shrink capsule. And I thought, what's happened? And so I rang him straight away and he's like, this is how it's come. And I realised that the only bottle we had open for tasting stock somehow made its way back into the stockpile of all the orders. And unfortunately, Chris was the one that received it. Um, but we sent him a new one today and that was our only spare bottle. So, Chris, you'll be getting that any day now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, um, to receive the tasting stock, that, that's, that's like winning the lottery ticket. <laughs> well, he was lucky, actually, because I said yeah, to him, you yeah. can keep the bottle of tasting yeah, stock and yeah. I'll send you a new one tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are too kind. I, I love the, 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 the customer spirit of... Um, Aussie small businesses, you know, you, you wouldn't get this service from a big distillery like a McAllen or something. They'd be like, oh, go away. Uh, no, look, I hope we can always um, we can always offer that sort of service. And um, and I love the fact that my well, yeah, our customers message us on Facebook and, and that sort of thing. That's awesome. If I can tell you what, if I, if I can have a couple of minutes because I can tell you one of the funniest stories. That <laughs> please, please go, mate. We, we love stories here. <laughs> we, we, we had a, a, um, a, a supplier in the Blue Mountains. You probably all know the little yes, bottle shop. Laura Sellers. Uh, yeah, Laura Sellers. And um, they asked if we could do a little window display. And we said, do you want to put a real bottle in the window? And he said, oh, no. I said, because he said, so anyway, we put a bottle in there with cold tea in it um, as a display. And um, anyway, he, had, he went out to lunch one day and um, his salesperson or the person there um, someone came in and said they'd really like a bottle of the Overeem whiskey. And he said, I think we've got none left. And they said, well, I'd be happy with the one in the window. Anyway, the guy, <laughs> packed, the guy packed it up and sent it off. It was $180 for <laughs> a tourist. It took the $180. For the cup tea. And we got a call from the, the owner of Laura Cellar some weeks later or a week later. And he said, I've got some really embarrassing news, but we sold that bottle. And he said, so if somebody writes to you and <laughs> says your whiskey's rubbish. He <laughs> says your whiskey's rubbish. But anyway, we never heard from them. So which is terrible. No, I no, wish no. I heard from them. No, no, it could ever, still no. be on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> it could still be on their on their whiskey shelf. Yeah. I reckon it's it's someone's collection, you know, top oh, shelf. So and one, one, they're going to pass it to the grandchild and like in 50 years uh, time they'll open it and be like, what's going on here? I really, really, really want to hear from that person because, um, yeah, it was a tourist. They got no name, no phone number, no email, nothing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I just wonder where that bottle of $180 tea is. Look out, you'll get a whole lot of calls all of a sudden of people saying, I've, I've got, got the that tea. That's awesome. Can we, uh, I know we've tried to sort of a few minutes over time. If there's any last questions for Casey, Mark and Jane, please uh, put it into the chat. Um, I did want to ask where, why, sorry, I'll, I'll start again. Uh, last time I, I, I met you ages ago, but Casey, you probably millions of people over the last and you've retired, obviously. You, you mentioned you always do a smaller cut compared to a lot of other whiskey distilleries. Is 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 that still the case in terms of the production now? It's it's very much about the smaller, the hearts are always a little bit smaller than some of the bigger dis distilleries. Um, yes, um, Mark Mark is um, the the head distiller now, of course, and uh, and he knows exactly where uh, where that cut used to be, and he went through a lot of old records of mine. They were paper records, which he doesn't believe in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've still told him you've got to keep paper records. But um, yeah, he went through them and he, and he did um, pick a number of uh, that point of where I used to cut. Um, and he asked why. And, and I said, it's because that's the ovary weight. And mm. I've never explained it any other way. It just, it's that's just a it point is. of difference. Um, and the fact that you know that it was a shorter cut She's already. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I must have had a couple when I took you through the distillery, or when you... <laughs> well, we've accidentally said something, maybe along yeah. the way. Uh, I, I, won't, I won't disclose the, the numbers, but uh, yeah, it was a, a little bit. That that's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, well remembered. We've definitely got our little um, our ways, and sometimes we can't always explain why. We just say because that's what Dad says. Mm. <laughs> that's how he did it, you know. And I think um, I'm quite comfortable with sticking to those um, those things. Mm. So we got a question from uh, 
Sean, are you guys open over the Christmas uh, festive period, uh, December, January? Um, um, you know, we definitely uh, can be. We can be for you. Just well, we are away know. from the twenty fourth to, to the second or third, fourth to the fourth. fourth. Yeah, twenty yeah, fourth to the fourth. We're not around, but any time before or after those dates, we'd love to have um, visitors to the distillery. Absolutely. Yeah, please let us know. It's the best way they just message you through Facebook or Instagram ahead of time, and yep, yep. I'll yep. even pop my number in here, um, and you can give me a ring. Oh, well, there you go. Look at that service. Told you it'd be very intimate tasting. Now, now you can uh, call out the distillery direct. Yeah, and we, we normally would even, yeah, we normally would if we were around. We're actually we're, we're away. We're up the east coast of Tassie and north coast of Tassie. So uh, um, otherwise, we'd be yeah, we're only fifty to ten minutes away from from the distillery, so yeah. it wouldn't be a problem. Well, I just got told that we've got a container of canisters arriving on the third, so we have to be there on the okay, third so to we're unload back them. On the third, yeah. So you can help, you can come on the third and help us unload them if you like. <laughs> there you go. There's a, a call to action for a bit of volunteering, and you might get a dram at the end of it too. Uh, there's a question here. Next three releases, and can I buy them now? I, look, un unless they want to tell us any more, I think just sign up to the newsletter, um, and and that will keep you abreast of all what's happening. That that man of promise. Uh, I think I saw the newsletter come in my inbox. I was on a work call. I, I, I finished half an hour later and it was gone. So, you know, you got to be on the money. Um, but you, you guys usually send out like a quick alert a day or two ahead, letting people know it's coming, right? Yeah, we've just had some troubles recently actually sending out campaigns via MailChimp that are ending up in people's spam folders. So um, I'm not sure how to get around that if anyone's got any advice, but they're ending up in people's spam folders. So we're generally trying to post something on Facebook too, uh, just so everyone can can see it but just to sort of give you a bit of an indication we've got a really exciting release coming up in february wow. um, next year uh, early 2021 um, something that we've been working on probably for the last three or four months now like um uh, something that's a little bit left to center um and then we've obviously got the bourbon casks uh coming out uh yeah probably in the second or you know, in the last in the in the second half of the beginning of next year, April, May, June, I think those mm -hmm. bourbon casks will, will probably go to market around there. And then yeah. tasting selections. Yeah, so just mm -hmm. so you know, there's gonna be three or four special mm -hmm. releases next year. That's it though. So yeah. don't think we're gonna bombard you every month. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because mm -hmm. we've we know we've got three or four really special ones next year, and then the following year probably only one or two. So um we're sort of we've gotten pretty excited this last four months and next year because we've just taken the brand back and i've had three years bubbling ideas and now that we've got the stock back it's been so fun to yeah to be able to release these things but yeah next year three or four releases and then the following year one or two yeah, yeah. awesome michael good suggestion he says he's added their over him email address to his VIP list in, I imagine in Gmail or Outlook, you can set as a favorite email address so it stops it from going to junk, so. Right, yeah. Um, any other final questions? I think we've got time for one more. There's a few people saying, hoping to get back. Uh, Josh was hoping for a cheeky post-Christmas visit, but uh, sounds like you're in Adelaide, mate. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, bunker down for the next six days and you know hope, get, hopefully have some whiskey to keep your company to, to keep you safe over there and hopefully uh, yeah the the south australian cluster sorts itself out um yeah it's been a, a terrible year for everyone but we'll hopefully get to the end of it but yeah if there's no other questions um just quickly going through i think that's it is there any any final words casey uh mark jamie yeah. you want to meet i'd like to say thank you to everybody for joining this uh, this this chat and um, Mike, you've been sort of uh, right centre for me, and and Chris, uh, and, Chris and you guys have, have been there since I started, and and maybe a lot of David. other young David, yeah. of course. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, um, and I thought I'd just mention a few by name. I can't see all the ones below. I've only got uh, half screen, but um, anyway, great to have you all on board, and it's been really great to catch up with you all. Mm. Thank you. For yeah, yeah, we yeah, genuinely absolutely. just yeah love you guys, and it feels weird that you're, you know, far away and that we're not just actually sitting here drinking in our living room with you. Um, but yeah, thanks for your support over all the years. It's been awesome. We couldn't do it without you all. Awesome. Yeah, Have you ever ever done? Oh, sorry, Mark. Go. No, I was just going to say for me personally, like just to see 
I mean, I've sort of witnessed it over the last eight to nine years since I sort of known Jay, like as in uh, how how supportive um, uh, customers have been for over him. But like these last six months or five months since we, we got the brand back, it's been a real eye opener and it's just, it's been awesome. So thank you. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for um, enjoying the whiskey and, um, and supporting the over him, yeah, um, the over him brand. Mate, David, uh, you, you definitely need to, uh, David Till needs to get an over him on that top shelf, mate. It's uh, one of the best Tassies out there, best Aussies out there actually. It's up there, but, Casey, Mark, Jane, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, I, I can see the little ones are getting anxious. They, they probably yeah. want to run out as well. They want to go to bed. <laughs> thank you to everyone at home. It's been, it's been one of my favourite tastings. A little bit smaller group than usual, but, uh, you know, a little bit more intimate. We got a little bit of uh, inside scoop about what's coming up as well. And, yeah, we'll see you at the next tasting all. And thank you so much for bottling the uh, flock shots with us. This is yeah, sold out in seven minutes. Um, one of my this is like whiskey butter for me. It's just uh, decadent, and I, I absolutely love it. So, yeah, we'll we'll hopefully see you at the next tasting. Uh, look after yourselves, and uh, for people at home, when you can visit Tassie, uh, do and you're down in Hobart, give Jane a call, send them a message or a text or whatever it is, and please visit their new distillery. It is amazing. I was down there last year in December. It's yeah, one of the coolest distilleries out there. It it will it, everything's running smick. Like it's it's worth visiting. Uh, I'll leave the surprises for everyone else, but thanks again tonight. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.